elusive. This is a dap on Solana. I love it to pieces. It's really fantastic and it gives you privacy. Now privacy is very important for the end users such as you and myself. If you're an institution and you're moving in $100 million, you may not want someone to know what you're doing. Not because you're doing anything illegitimate, which of course don't, don't do anything illegal. But $100 million, maybe you're going after a couple of different tokens and someone can watch that and they can front run you or they could try and do like a big FUD campaign or something. Like when there's more extractable value, then of course there's more risk. So privacy is a right that we have and it's something that we definitely, definitely want. Now Elusive, they had their Twitter from January 2022. They have some VC funding. They've got almost 10,000 followers. In a month's time, it's probably gonna be 20,000 followers and that's completely fantastic. And this is essentially, if you're from the Ethereum world, this is kind of like Tornado Cash. The difference being they've gone with a privacy solution that also conforms to regulation standards. Even though the regulation standards are not currently known, they have that ability to basically comply with regulation standards. So to the website, elusive.io. Now Elusive is in beta and they are hiring as well. As far as I'm aware, all these jobs are still available and they are after a community manager. So if you have the skills to pay the bills, I think this would be worthwhile for sure. From here, we'll just click on launch beta app and then this is the UI. Now, before we go any further, I'll give you a quick demonstration of how it works. Okay, so on my whiteboard, let's go with a big pool. So we can call this a liquidity pool essentially and all that we might have in here is soul. And there could be $1 million worth of soul. So we'll just say 10,000 soul and then Let's say you have an address. This is your address number one. And in here you've got 20 soul. And you just decide you want to put in 10 soul. You want to send it to this address over here. This is the new address, address number two. So you can plonk in here maybe 10 soul. Adding 10 soul will increase it here, of course. And then from here you might decide to withdraw 8 soul. So this is a brand new wallet, or it may not be. It's just a wallet and then 8 soul goes into there and of course this becomes a little bit less. Now it's important to note that this is not a mixing service. A mixing service is something that you might have heard of with regards to Bitcoin where funds come in, they get all mixed up and then you get a bit of Bitcoin from someone and a bit of Bitcoin from another person, etc. This is done differently. Your funds are not mixed with anybody. What basically happens is you put in your funds, it goes into a different wallet and then you withdraw other funds out. So in order to keep kind of a little bit more anonymity, what you want to do is you want to put in some soul and you wouldn't then go and withdraw the exact same amount of soul or you might wait a short period of time or something like that. You could, as an example, do 100 soul in and then just withdraw it a little bit by little bit if you wanted to. You can also do this with other tokens such as USDC. Okay, so let's get started. So in my Phantom Wallet, I'm going to remind you about this all the time. Just deal with it. This is one of the most important bits of alpha I can give you. Have different wallets for different things. Anything with a, a huge amount of value for you, have it on a ledger. And even with your ledger, you can have 10 wallets. So here I've got an elusive wallet. I've funded this with a little bit of soul and some USDC. I'm going to go and do a little in-app swap here. I'm going to get a little bit more soul maybe just like $100 worth or so. And then I'm going to add Sol and USDC into Elusive. So we'll swap this. It will be in our wallet in a second. And then we've got a brand new wallet set up as a different private key that's got nothing in it. And that's here. And I've just called this W1 from Elusive. Now, of course, you can record this however you want. All right, back to Elusive. Let's go ahead and let's sign in with this. At the moment, if you're using a ledger, the only option to use a ledger is directly ledger with Elusive, which doesn't give you the same kind of flexibility as using it with Phantom. I know they're working on integrating that in the future, but at the moment, that's the only way to do it. Okay, so let's get started with Elusive. Phantom, get started here, and we'll sign the transaction. So in my Elusive app, you can see that I have got a private balance of 3.4 soul. I've also got one soul already in my actual Phantom wallet, and I've got 400 USDC. So what I can do is I can top up and I can maybe just top up with 0.5 soul, top up, and this will start the topping up process. It says it takes 15 seconds. 
it can take longer. And I think that's just because there's been a crazy increase in the number of people actually using Elusive. Like it's gone from maybe a couple of hundred to thousands of people. So this topping up process, it can take a little bit longer. But in the meantime, just keep in mind and just remember that you want to enhance your privacy with larger top ups. So if you're going to put in Tensole, you're not going to go and then move that Tensole to another wallet. You want to put in Tensole and then move out five or eight or two or one, something like that. Now let's go and top up some USDC. We can also do Tether, Judosol, JTO, Bonk, Pith, Samwood, and a numerous other tokens here as well. And they all go into their own liquidity pool. At present, there are no fees as well, but fees will of course come in the future. USD coin will top up here. We've got 400. So I'll just put in say 250 and top up. And I've successfully topped up $250. It took a little bit longer than 15 seconds, but it didn't take very long. Now we can send this privately. So if we come up into our wallet here, I can go and grab another wallet address or you can grab any wallet address on the Solana blockchain and we can just copy this here. I can see it's 8rub and then wh5f. So I'll paste it here quickly. So it's 8rub and then at the end I'll just push the end button and we can see the other part of the address. So it was copied correctly and we're just going to go ahead and we'll send 150 USDC and just click send. Now you can see there are fees here. None of the fees go to the protocol. We have a transaction fee, a priority fee, which is what we may have to use sometimes, which is normal, like Phantom has priority fees built in as well. And then we have a token rent fee. So because there's no USDC in this brand new wallet, this is what we have to pay initially. So we'll send this token here and we'll click confirm send. As mentioned, this takes about 15 seconds. Regarding token rent, I've talked about this before, but as the cost of Sol goes up, this fee will increase. So if Sol is about $500, it will cost about $1 in order to actually open a token rent account. And you can always claim that back in the future if you need to. So now this has gone through, we're all good. And if we go to our transactions panel just here, we can see all of our transactions. And we can also separate them by month. So we sent this $150, plus a little bit extra as we can see, which just related to the fees. And previously I started working on this tutorial back in December, but there was too much load on the DAP. That's why I'm starting it again now. So we can see everything here. Let's also go and let's go and send a little bit of soul because if we go into our wallet here, if we just have a quick little look, in this wallet here we've got $150 worth of USDC, but we've got no soul, so we can't do anything with it. We'll go back to our main wallet connect it here. Every now and then I'm noticing that there are some small connection issues just if you change wallets. So if you get back here and for some reason it's not signing or connecting to the wallet, it's a very easy fix. Just quickly refresh the page. Now we've got our soul here. We will go and grab the recipient address again. It's probably already copied, but let's just go here and copy it like that. Paste it. Check the first four of course and the last four characters as per normal and we're just going to put in one soul. We'll send that. We've got our total fees and we'll confirm send. And we have success. It has been sent. If we go to our transactions, we will see it just here. And if we just go into our new wallet, we'll see we've got one extra soul right there. Click in there, one soul, we're good to go. Now there's also a feature called swaps. This is simple enough to understand. However, it's currently been upgraded anyone's funds in here are safe, but I cannot actually swap it at the moment. This should be resumed shortly, hopefully today. If not, the team is actively working on it. Now when it comes to Elusive, there's a lot of stuff that's too complex for me to understand. A really smart dev that understands privacy will understand it. Essentially, in my opinion, this is very much needed across the space. But as I mentioned before, we do need compliance. The issue being Tornado Cash on Ethereum was attacked by the US government. So other governments can go and attack. So what you need is the ability to find out who bad actors are. So back to the whiteboard. Zeus is what they are calling their next version of Elusive or something along those lines, just to keep it simple. And essentially it would be node operators. So as an example with Solana, it has validators. So Solana has all these validators that validate the transactions such as validator.com that's a validator that you should be staking your soul with. 
With validator.com, they go and validate all the transactions. They say, yes, this is a good transaction. No, this never happened. They approve it. Kind of like that. Just I'm keeping it very, very simple. Similar thing would happen with this is my understanding. So imagine you have different little computers, bits of software running. And essentially what they do is they wouldn't necessarily send the transactions or maybe they would, but you've got all these transactions and they would have between them, they would know who sent what, where. So they'll be able to work that out. So if the US government, you know, if the US government, we'll call this the a house there, if they said, hey, elusive, there's an issue with this wallet here, we believe they're money laundering and sending it to terrorists or something like that. They would have to ping in some way, a DAO or like team would have to work it out, but they would ping elusive as a company. And basically they would say, this is the data and maybe a subpoena or something would be issued. And then that would have to go to the nodes. So these are the nodes here and they have to do some sort of consensus to say, will we provide all the information regarding those private transactions to the US government or other government body. So they do all this, and they do all this consensus. So as I understand, not one validator will actually know what happened with one transaction. You need to have this kind of consensus, all these different operators working together. So in this way, it does offer a compliance factor. You can work out if someone is being a bad actor. Now, of course, this step from here to this step from here, no one's done this as far as I'm aware. So this has multiple steps, but it basically it offers a path to compliance because you definitely want to make sure that people have privacy, but you also you don't want to have people sending a hundred million dollars to some terrorist activity in whatever country as an example. So this is Zeus. It's not live yet. When it gets live, I'll mention it normally in my daily alpha, but I'll probably cover it again. The next thing I want to talk about, of course, is a token. Now, I have no idea if there's going to be a token, but it seems logical. If you're going to have some sort of validator or computer or node that's making sure everything in the network is all good, as I mentioned, these are all little nodes, you need something, normally a token, to let this happen. You need some way of being rewarded. So when you've got all these nodes, in my opinion, they will need a token. You'll need to have some sort of voting weight. So maybe there's like, you know, 500,000 tokens in this node and this one has 100,000. Therefore, this little node, this would have more weight to say, yes, provide the details or no, don't provide the details. Something like that. This is all not public information, as in I've been told what was public and the rest I'm just kind of putting in my mind of what I think would be logical. This might have 50K and this may have 10K tokens actually delegated. Maybe you get your own tokens and you can delegate to these as well. I'm not entirely sure, but essentially the goal of any protocol like this is to start off with VC funding. Initially, you start with that VC funding. It gets you to a certain stage. There's some sort of return for the original VCs. Of course, the team has a good return as well. And then you want to try and move it into a public good where there's a core team and that core team is really well paid and there's a treasury that goes to a DAO or something, but it becomes something where, you know, there's a thousand people involved and then there's 10,000 people and then there's a million token holders. That's how you kind of push this forward into the Web3 space. If you just try and bootstrap everything with a 10K grant from someone or just your own money, it's less likely to actually have success. So this is what I think is more the appropriate way of doing it. So the reason why I mentioned this is possibly there'll be an airdrop for early users. Possibly it will just be if you just use it once, like it was with Tornado Cash, everyone got, as far as I'm aware, a certain amount of Tornado and that token I'll show you quickly. So with Tornado Cash, Tornado, they airdropped half a million dollars worth. I think they probably airdropped more than that, but not everyone would have claimed. The average size was 38 torn, which is fine. And it was based on your volume. So maybe it's going to be similar with Elusive. This is all speculation. I just must make that clear. Even if there was no token airdrop, I would still use Elusive. It's just that good. The snapshot date was December 6th. So let's have a look and see when this token actually launched. Okay, so you would have got the token. It wouldn't have been listed for some reason. Maybe if you held it and if you had 78 and if you had like 38 tokens or maybe 50 tokens at $400, that would have been a nice airdrop, of course. So a token airdrop. This is speculation. I know I've mentioned that a few times, but I do think it's likely. 
how would you go about doing it? Well, you've got a couple of different strategies. You could have like one address and then just go with volume. So maybe you want to, you know, send quite a bit. Every time you want to do a send, you go via elusive. It adds a little bit of extra time, but it kind of gives you the feel of the DAP. You can also go with swaps. Once swaps come back online, this could be very, very helpful. And I think bigger accounts are going to use this because you want those big accounts to kind of keep things a little bit more private. Volume swaps, or you could go for more wallets. So maybe you want to have your five different wallets doing this. This is more of a farming technique. It's not something that I'm saying you should do. I'm just letting you know that people will do it. So you may want to do it. So these are kind of your options here. Then follow them on their socials. Follow them on Twitter. Join their Discord. If you have any support issues, go there. If you want to help out some people, go there. Make guides, make tutorials, make informative posts, whatever you like. This brings in more money because people do respect privacy. So I'll leave you with that. And remember, they do have a couple of open jobs if you're keen. Let me know your thoughts below on Elusive. I am very, very excited for it. Thanks for watching. Stay curious and we'll catch you in the next video.